Welcome to the 2014 edition of Scholars Forum. This year we're focusing on writing transitions, meaning how does a writer transition from doing one type of writing to another, either become from moving from a graduate student to a faculty member or at other points in their career. Today we're thrilled to be speaking with Sumi Sirikwa, who is an assistant professor in the School of Engineering. Sumi publishes in the area of geotechnical engineering and has published journal articles, conference proceedings, and various types of publications. And we'll get started by asking if you could tell us about um, the kinds of writing that you do and the topics that you write about. Thank you, Barbara. I work on the field of geotechnical engineering, so I, <laughs> it's very specific to the field of civil engineering. So it's very technical kind of writing I do. I write for journal publication, I write for industrial reports, and I write for conferences. I also prepare notes for my classes. So I want to connect the lecture that I give it to the fundamental geotechnical engineering to be connect with my research area sometimes when possible. So I try to write for uh, that point of view too. When you're getting started on a writing project, a new project, mm -hmm. what is your process for that? How do you get started? It depends on where I'm going to write, like for, for what reason I'm going to write this. So if it is a technical publication, uh, it depends on how much we have produced in our lab mm -hmm. and then look into those data, start uh, plotting those data, try to understand what, what those data means to us. And then if we do the numerical modeling, so we try to combine the experimental side and the numerical side. So start from the data outcomes and then connect with the scope of the work and then start going back, look into the literature, what other people have done, and you know, then combine together, start the introduction and conclusion in the end. So I used to do a lot more before now. I have a student, graduate students who works individual projects, but I work very closely with them so that I know what they're doing and uh, they come up with their data then start, you know, both of us start working together on the publication side. So this is how I structure my work and I, I read a lot on the literature to find out what is going on yeah. and uh, whether we are missing something, what is obvious, uh, so those kind of information. It's interesting with the, the type of technical writing that you do that you really need to start with the data in order to inform the rest of it, whereas someone in, in English literature, for example, would typically say that they start with the literature review, right, because that's where they get their data from. So that's, that's useful insight for graduate students. Yes, I, I, because when it comes to the writing part, uh, we try to you know, plot our data and then start from there. Mm -hmm. But before deciding uh, the research project, that time it requires an intensive literature review. Of course, so yes. before getting into the research project, we do the literature review and then come up with the project, see the research gap out there and find out our objectives. But when we start writing technical publication paper or technical paper, then we start plotting our data you know, mm -hmm. give the description on those data, what we get from there, and then combine together. So it's kind of a going back from what you get and then coming back to the whole structure, how you want to present them. Very cyclical process. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about moving from being a graduate student to a, a new faculty member, how do you feel that your voice has changed over time as a writer? It's more on the thinking side. Um, yes. When I was a graduate student, I knew what was my project about, and I it was uh, you know going depth into the project as much as I could, but limited to that project itself. But now I have to look in the more broader perspective. Yes. So what I see in the similar areas, what is going on, how I can connect my research with more applications. More applications mm -hmm. are important engineering field it's more important that you work for uh, the need not only for the fundamental requirements right. so the combination of fundamental requirements and the application could be a very good kind of research so i try to do that now and therefore i read a lot of you know uh, newsletters in the field a lot of issues related to the field and um, then come up with the connection that i i can develop from my research group and uh, work 
in that certain areas. Part of the change of your voice as a writer is reading more broadly as well um, than you had done as a graduate student because you're so focused. Yeah, it was uh, you know going to the depth. It's much wider areas and and getting in a different depths. It was one depth before as a graduate student, <laughs> but now it's a more wider areas and covering more areas. At the complete opposite end from starting your writing, how do you finish a writing project? How do you know when something is complete? I write for uh, like technical publication, mm -hmm. proposals, writing, uh, industrial individual reports. If it is uh, coming out from a research project and we divide what are our what are the objectives are for that particular project. Yes. And at the very beginning when the student started to work, we kind of know how many publications we want from there. Yes. So we try to identify that before me and my student together and then start working on that. But uh, when I started writing on the technical uh, publication, it's really hard um, to stop here at certain points. It, if you want to have a bigger publication, it's always hard to get a bigger publication because all journals are restricted to number of paper and mm -hmm. uh, you know, number of pages. So those kind of issues are there. So we have to be very careful. So try to identify them at the very beginning, what would be our objectives from this research project and identify, okay, this one objective can go into one publication and the second one can go into another publication. So that this is how we identify our boundaries. As you're working with those graduate students and, and coaching them through the process of preparing the document, how do you tell them or how do you decide when enough editing has been done? Like this is the version we're going to submit and then we're going to move on to the next thing in our program. It's a lot of iteration process mm -hmm. definitely. Um, what I do, I start telling them when you are comfortable send me the paper don't send me when you are not yet comfortable you're not yet there and when I read or scan through the whole uh, document first and I see oh he hasn't done his job properly he or she so I send that back to the student and say that you have to give your hundred percent then mm -hmm. I will get back to your position and start working and when it is a technical publication, I always contribute as much as possible. In that includes that contributing in the writing 100%. So it's not up to the student itself, it's my writing sure. as well. Therefore, I wait until the student come to me and say, this is the best I can do. Then I start working on that. So it's a lot of editing. After I work and then I give it back to the student and say, this is how I have shaped the paper yeah. and do you think this is right or you want to contribute again sometimes I see some of the students who are really you know hard working they try to input afterwards so this is kind of a mutual understanding and we decide okay this is right now uh, good to go for a publication thank you for taking the time to participate in our scholars forum you can view additional videos like this one on the Center for Scholarly Communication Scholars Forum website <laughs>